All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we have entered the second month of 2023, I thought it's very important for us to understand, in a sense, what the flavors of uh, the major transits, what, what kind of a flavor will we have during this year 2023. So, for example, I am in drikpanchang.com and I see Jupiter is currently in Pisces. Uh, Jupiter will move into Aries this year. And Rahu Ketu, uh, I mean, Rahu will move into Pisces back from Aries. And we see Saturn will be in Aquarius uh, throughout this year from 17 Jan. So these are primarily the energies. And Ketu, of course, uh, will move into the sign of Virgo, okay, from the sign of Libra. So if you see, uh, if you try to look at the Kalpurush Kundli, what's going on? If, if, you, if you go and go and try to see which houses are these planets uh, indicating, I mean, in the natural zodiac, <coughs> you will see uh, the 11th house, of course. Then you will see the 12th house. Then you will see uh, the first house, uh, the seventh house and the sixth house so these these are the houses where uh, the energies are getting con concentrated so it becomes very important for us to discuss and also the nature of these planets uh, become very important because now any planet can transit in any particular house but every planet uh, gets a different color for every house and every sign so, of course, it will depend on your ascendant where these transits are falling. For example, for you, Saturn may transit in a different house from your ascendant. And, of course, Jupiter, Rahu, Ketu, they will all be in different houses. Although it is uh, the same for all uh, the ascendants, but individually, then again, it depends on your uh, natal birth chart, your placement of these planets originally so originally how is your saturn how is your jupiter how is your rahu how is your ketu so it depends on all these factors also and most importantly your dashas so what's going on in the dashas mahadasha antar dasha and sometimes pratyantar also so therefore whenever we see transit videos for big planets for this particular year uh, we we have to understand that uh, whatever we see may not what whatever we hear in that video may not apply 100 percent for us because uh, maybe the dashas are saying something different and that's how destiny works actually through the dashas but suppose you have had a look at your dashas and you have seen you know the overall flow of your chart you have done a comprehensive analysis <clears throat> And then you come to these planetary transits. Uh, so what do you think? Uh, so my my take on this is that these energies are telling me deep down inside there will be a need for finding happiness in originality, for finding meaning for the work that we do, uh, trying to understand what what are we doing why are we doing and for whom are we doing it right so i will not go into the details when what is happening but overall if i see uh this year's transits major planets then i see that the most important thing will be uh, to find that calling within and especially not just within just for ourselves it, it's actually uh, find it within but also for Mm, uh, helping the society actually it's for understanding what we are good at individually but also understanding what is good for the society in large so it's not just about me and my preferences and my choices but it is also equally about uh, what will happen to others what will happen to the society what will happen to uh, the world in general and when I say world and society it doesn't mean just, you know, poor people, but, but it means a holistic uh, development. So if you are in a position where you can make an impact in the society, you, know, you, uh, you, you, you are the CEO of a company or you are a vice president or, <clears throat> or maybe you are a father or you are a mother or you are an elder brother. So you are in any authority position, in any senior position. And you have some subordinates uh, follow who follow you, or you're a social media star, 
then it's very important that you understand uh, that my happiness will depend on not only just what I like and what I don't like, but it will also depend on what they like. So, for example, uh, you, you may do certain things which you think is very good for you and which may be good for you, but they may not be the best thing for somebody else. So, if you can find the middle ground where you can see, okay, something is working for me and something is working for the others also and especially our subordinates, then we will be much happier in life. And anytime we feel that, oh, you know, society is not uh, treating me nice, well, uh, then we have to see if, if there is something which I can do first, right, uh, to change certain things within me. Uh, now, this does not mean we just change ourselves and we don't do anything external. No, it doesn't mean that. But it simply means so many times we will see uh, things which are completely beyond our control, which we cannot change. And this is not only with 2023. This can be with any year. So we feel that, okay, I can't change this. Uh, and that brings frustration. That brings anxiety. That brings depression. So what do you do in such situations? Well, we have to we have to understand that from a perspective of law of karma, there are certain uh, things which we may not get as per our expectation. So this is like we have to be realistic sometimes. And for every person, that area of life will be different. Somebody will have a very good health. Somebody will be very good looking. Somebody will have a lot of money. Somebody will have a very good marriage. Somebody will have a very good relationship with parents. Somebody will have very great friends. Somebody will have very good children. Somebody will have a very good spiritual life. All those spirituality is beyond uh, karma. But in essence, what I am trying to tell you is that there will always be certain things in your life which... Uh, you might feel that, oh, yeah, maybe, why, why is God punishing me in this area, right? But actually, God doesn't punish us. It is we ourselves who punish uh, ourselves through our previous karma, actually. God never interferes in our karma. So, therefore, if we are having certain good things in life, then uh, it's very important that we count on our blessings and we understand that these Things have come because I have done some good activities in the past and also by the will of God. But at the same time, just because I have these good things, I should not take them cheaply and I should not uh, discard them or misuse them. Or as I said, you know, not, not misuse in the sense like, you know, not exploit them. Okay, so uh, maybe you have very good friends, you know, maybe you have a very good uh, spouse, maybe you have a very good parents. But... Uh, just because you have them, it doesn't mean that you take them for granted and you just do whatever you like with them. Okay, So that's not very good because uh, then what happens is from uh, 1000, we will go to minus 10,000 because suppose you, you have a very uh, good uh, relationship with your parents. Your parents are very good, but you do politics and you try to exploit them, you know, you... Uh, suck them out of their resources at the fag end of their life. You know, you do some politics for inheritance and all this. For example, then what will happen is in the next life, you will also be born in a family where you will not get any inheritance or at the end of your life, your children will also do something similar. Okay, so whatever good you have, uh, count on your blessings, uh, be grateful, always express yourself to those people who you are grateful to. And uh, do not exploit them, do not misuse them. And along with that, those areas of life where you feel it's not just good enough or not as good as I expected. Well, those areas are certain places where you, you have to visit from a spiritual perspective. Like for example, uh, in the Vedic scriptures it is said, uh, when a person becomes old, uh, he starts feeling the need of you know his uh, children, and you know he has to ask help from his children. And when he's very old, he cannot uh, pass urine, stool. He can't eat. He can't even breathe properly sometimes. 
so during such a situation does it mean that the person should you know just uh, go away somewhere or not necessarily the person should actually uh, take help of the son or the daughter or you know daughter in law son in law why because when he when he takes help from them he will feel very humiliated and very embarrassed you know oh my god this this boy or this girl who you know i i i had taken care of them now you know they are taking care of me how pathetic my life is you know so when this person has this you know humiliating experience you know some his daughter in law is coming and you know cleaning his uh, whatever i mean stool urine or his you know son is putting food into his mouth like this oh my god how humiliating it is then what happens is he can sometimes feel you know oh god how humiliating this is you know but why the scriptures say that it is good for him to have this experience because he will realize that he is old and he is so helpless and he is miserable and his ego will come down and then he will be in a better position to do some spiritual practices if at all he has some uh, sense remaining therefore uh, whenever you feel that certain things are not good in your life especially this year and then always try to think what what can i do to adjust myself in this situation how can i look towards god and spirituality in a way that i start feeling the need you know gradually lesser and le less less and less basically lesser and lesser need of certain things you know so for example uh, if if you do not have a very good marriage Uh, then and very good in the sense like somehow it's not great so then maybe you can join some spiritual community and spend more time there and do your responsibilities as a husband or a wife uh, but understand that maybe marriage is not your cup of tea you know same is with profession sometimes like we try our best but but it doesn't happen but it doesn't mean that it will always be bad or it doesn't mean that it always has to be good so we might have to make peace with certain things in our life and everybody has to make peace in some area of life even even uh, the world's richest or richer than anybody can be right so let, let's take some example you know, like you know bill gates right he's like very rich one of the world's richest persons i uh, may not be now as per the top five or whatever but we know he's very rich so even he has you know had a divorce now i'm not going into his personal life he had a divorce that's good bad fine or whatever i mean that's his his job but uh, what i'm trying to say here is that if, even a person of his stature even uh, he he might have built this you know great company microsoft or whatever i mean that that, that he had exceptional good talent and exceptionally good karma in that area but maybe somewhere deep down the line he might have neglected his marriage or never put that much effort or maybe you know they they realize that maybe yeah it's like not working or, or whatever i mean what i'm trying to tell you is either you didn't try or maybe it was destined but there will always be something in your life which you will feel oh i wish it was better in this area of life right and we also see this story in shrimad bhagavatam like time and again this the same uh, the same episode keeps repeating in the shrimad bhagavatam like uh, we see uh, chitragetu maharaj you know, like he had so many things He's, it's like he had so much yet but the problem was he didn't have a son and then it was like the whole world became a graveyard for him it was like shamshan it's like there's nothing good in this world why because he he had no children and he wanted a son who could be the king after him and take care of the affairs and so that he could you know go to the forest so Um, and on the other side you know sometimes she might have a very good marriage but maybe you have health problems or you are suffering from a professional perspective and then that's how your life goes so try your best to make an impact in your life and to society but 
if you can't then accept it as your destiny now i understand it's very hard to say like this it's easier said than done and when somebody is hearing this video they may say oh why are you saying you know fatalistic things like you know karma and all this nonsense we don't agree to it you know we believe in free will you know whatever you decide you can do well free will is there but that doesn't mean destiny disappears free will is basically how we react to our existing destiny destiny doesn't change that is why it is known as uh, prarabdha okay that which is fixed that which is destined that's why that's the word destiny okay so this doesn't mean we don't try to change things but if after trying two three times three times maximum if it still doesn't work then maybe it's better for us to accept or maybe you know it may change in the future it doesn't mean that it will never change but it may change in the future so become more aware become more conscious because aquarius pisces you know these are very elevated signs and then we have aries and libra aries is about me libra is about other people so become more conscious and aware of your choices and the choices of other people around you and this is what i have said repeatedly and especially with planets like saturn uh, and rahu coming into signs of aquarius and pisces gradually so we may start feeling that yes the world has to become a better place and maybe i can do my small bit for it and that will in turn make me more happier than just if it was all about me okay so think about yourself but also think about others count on your blessings and accept certain things which even after trying so many times you couldn't change and uh, look to god at the end of the day all right thank you very much for your patience if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to down below and if you want a consultation my website is also down below god is there with you all the time irrespective of it's 2023 or 2024 or 2033 who knows maybe some of us will be there at 20 uh not 2033 what do you say 3033 3023 oh sorry uh 2123 sorry <laughs> some maybe somebody is there huh? uh yeah or or maybe uh, nobody else is there or maybe someday you will see uh, somebody after 100 years is seeing this video and is like oh yeah yeah i made it <laughs> but god is always there with you all right so read the bhagavad gita or any uh, divine text that you are inspired by and you will know what he wants to tell you okay thank you very much